Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here's today's host, Monica Profit. Hello, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here with Misha Benayel of Nodal and Nodal Cash App. Hi, Misha. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Monica. Thank you for inviting me on your on your podcast. <laughs> of course. I'm so glad that we could get introduced. We got introduced to the wonderfully massive yet very, very small world blockchain space. It's been nice to get to know more and more wonderful innovators in the blockchain space. So thank you for taking the time. I know you guys are in the middle of a big push and, uh, and, and you, it's a definitely a busy time at Nodal. Um, but I would love to start with actually just what is Nodal and... Um, and why did you decide this had to be made in the world? Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a great question. And it can be, uh, I can give a very, very long answer. So we'll try to be brief. And, uh, and again, I'm very excited to, to participate. So, and to tell the story uh, behind Nodal and what we are doing and, and Nodal Cash. So Nodal, we are building a, a wireless mesh network. Uh, and we believe uh, we are probably already today one of the largest wireless mesh network uh, and, uh, and networks on the on, on, on the planet, and the way we achieve that uh, so quickly, it's because we rely only on software, and um, it's a very unique and innovative way of building wireless networks. So what we do is we push uh, an app, the Nodal Cache, but also a library when we partner with app developers, that when you have this app on your phone, basically your phone becomes. I'm going to try to say that in a very uh, uh, lemon term. Imagine you, your phone becomes a hotspot for IoT. So when you have this app on your phone, any sensor, any device, any appliance in proximity can use your phone as a way to connect to the internet. And uh, basically, we are replicating the original model of the internet. So when the internet started, you had universities starting to spark uh, servers and then interconnecting these servers, which was the beginning of creating the, the giant internet. And that's what we do at the individual level. So now every individual, I mean, any individual who has a smartphone can be part of this network and share their access and connectivity uh, with devices, sensors. But the great thing is there is a blockchain and crypto component to it because we wanted to incentivize people to participate. So when you join the nodal network, you become uh, a node in the network and you uh, generate a cryptocurrency called nodal cash. So in incentivizing you basically, let me get this right. And I'm gonna think of this in metaphoric terms. When the internet first started, there had to be, so there had to be hardware built to be able to then run the software that would then, that would connect these computers in different locations and create the internet. But now that we have so much hardware, like our phones are always right here, we can just leverage the fact that there's already hardware built and simply only install software that then has an incentivizing feature to reconnect people through wireless technology. Absolutely. So because we use the smartphones who already have a radio and antenna, uh, we just need to push software to leverage these capabilities of your smartphone and to basically turn it into a hotspot or a base station to connect anything. Okay, so I was in, this is gonna sound like I'm going on a tangent and I, know, I love to do that, but I'm not gonna go too far, I promise. I was in Ecuador uh, several years ago and I put my phone down, I was checking with this and that, put it down, had a drink at the bar, I was waiting for my flight. Next thing I know, my phone's been hacked and there's just messages going sent out in Chinese or in some you know Asian language. Uh, and I was like, great, my phone is hacked. I don't know what to do. And that's it, you know? 
so I somehow, you know, connected to an internet. Uh, I got, I got, you know, somebody was able to connect through my device and into my device and then use it in a way that I couldn't control. I had to hard reset it. I didn't know what else to do. I just shut it down until I was out of the airport and I got my flight and I left. And then I was like, I hope my phone's okay. And it was, but I didn't know really what happened. And I noticed that when I, here's the tie in, I promise it's not just a tangent, mm -hmm. but I noticed that when I downloaded the, uh, the nodal cash app today, um, because I was so curious and I wanted to, you know, learn all about this for our for our conversation. I noticed that the first thing it says is we take your privacy very seriously. And I was like, okay, so what are you doing to enable, you know, this kind of connectivity through something as personal as a phone that doesn't make it end up getting hacked or something? What is the privacy layer there? So first we, um, I mean, contrary to uh, many mobile applications who are trying to monetize your personal data or your information, we, we are not interested in all of that. Uh, so we, we don't want to know who you are. We don't care, actually. Uh, and uh, so what we... we like a true Frenchman. We just don't care. <laughs> but what we are interested in is actually leverage your, 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 your capacity as a, as a node to connect things. And um, so first, we don't ask you to sign up. You can just download the app. It does no sign up process. Um, we randomize the identities of the nodes, so that way we will never know or be able to know who you are because we randomize that identity. And, uh, and so we do all these things to basically uh, be, um, um, I would say, uh, as light touch as possible on your phone and just uh, focusing on the purpose of connecting things because that's really what we want to do and that's the whole mission. Um, and so when you have this app, uh, like I mentioned, you can be rewarded for moving data. And so if you are familiar with uh, Bitcoin and the process of mining with Bitcoin, yeah. so in Bitcoin, when you participate and you mine, you basically create and generate Bitcoins by solving a, a complex equation. And that's what is called this process of mining and this, this proof of work. With, with Nodal, we created another proof of work, where, which is called proof of connectivity. Okay. And it is based on the amount of data that you move, the value of the data that you move, uh, based on many factors. Also, if you are the only one who is able to move the data at a given time in a specific location. And all these parameters are taken into account to actually uh, generate the coin and reward you with this coin. And yeah. what we love about that idea is uh, Bitcoin, I mean, to mine Bitcoin, you either needed to be a very early initiated developer who yeah. was close to the original people who... Uh, who created Bitcoin uh, or, who, or the early adopters to be able to have a chance to actually mine Bitcoin. Yeah, that's I mean, today, if you want to mine Bitcoins, you're going to have to join a large pool to be able to, uh, to be uh, participating. So it's already almost trusted by probably 10 big organizations that are the one who control these big pools of miners. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but the beauty with Nodal is anyone with a smartphone I am one of them now. I am mining um, nodal cash myself right now. So I know so anyone that with a smartphone can access that that basically the and participate and uh, and be able to to uh, to remotely mine the this cryptocurrency. You know that your explanation really helps me understand what was happening with my phone because while I I downloaded it and I saw I was like okay my cash app is zero of course it's a zero but how does it how do, what do I do you know it's not like sweat coin where I walk around and I earn sweat coins by walking I'm like what do I do and I then saw packets moving at this much per packet it's moving and there's like I saw like something was telling me a ratio of reward and I didn't understand what the actual ratio of reward was but then I opened it back up and I realized I have 0. 0.000039 cash you know, nodal cash. And I was like, oh, I guess it was about the packets, but now there's no packets being moved. And so nothing's changing. And I don't know when something changes it or doesn't, but I notice that, okay, I'm, I'm clearly doing something with the network. I'm not sure exactly what, but my phone, it's not like I'm losing battery really fast. It's almost like it doesn't make any difference to me. I just happen to earn very passively. And then, and then that's the goal. The goal is to create for you uh, another source of uh, revenues. Yeah. <laughs> that you, you, you don't need to do much to actually access it but it leverages your, your capacity, the capacity and capability of your smartphones to, to achieve that. Um, and um, I would say it's a little bit, I like to compare it often to, to Pokemon Go. Okay. So um, you just move, you, or, or, I mean, Sweatcoin is also a good example, but 
with Pokemon Go, you can go out, have to chase uh, a Pokemon, all these things. But well, that's what's happening with Nodal Cash. You just move around, and uh, as you pass by uh, sensors or devices that need to connect to the internet, basically, uh, your your node will basically um, uh, connect to these devices and enable the data to flow to the internet. And wow. uh, so. Indeed, if you stay in the same place, uh, you are probably going to generate little uh, rewards. Okay. But if you move with your phone, uh, you, uh, or if you go into uh, uh, places where you have a lot of electronics or appliance or sensors, then you have more chances to, to move more data and then to be rewarded more. So this would be the perfect app for somebody who is like, say, underpaid at Best Buy. They work at Best Buy, but they're always around electronics. <laughs> they're walking around all the time, and this is just like gives them extra, right? This Actually, is, yeah. So that's a very good market. Market. <laughs> I, I never thought about that, but I, I'm sure that if uh, some staff uh, or employees at Best Buy uh, run the app, yeah, they, they probably have a chance well. to generate more revenues and rewards than the, than we, anyone else. Yeah. We definitely need a hashtag Best Buy in this one because. <laughs> I think that's your new target user base right there. <laughs> this is the underpaid electronics department. <laughs> so a lot of um, blockchain projects, they end up, I've noticed that there's sort of two avenues that innovators take to end up in this nexus of cryptocurrency and blockchain. We've talked with, um, and we, me and my imaginary friends, but also, yes, me and my co-host, Tracy Hazard, who also talks with people on this, on this podcast. But we talk with different innovators that sometimes they just have a blockchain um, application and they, there's no crypto component at all. They're just using distributed ledger technology because it's making it better, right? It's just working better. And to decentralize something sometimes works much better. And sometimes there's a crypto layer as well. There's some projects that started with the crypto layer, the tokenomics, if you will, or the crypto economics. And then they kind of like, it's great technology. Where do we apply it? And they sort of were like this roaming person looking for the place to put it. Which one for you was the beginning? Did, did they really come as a married comp? combo in your mind? Or did you see it as, I want to make this mesh network, how can I incentivize people to participate? Or did it come up with, how can I get people passive, easy, mineable income that doesn't create a hierarchy of entry point? And how do I just like find the right application for it, like a mesh network? Which way was that? So actually it's a combo. Okay. Uh, the, to have the cryptocurrency and the blockchain uh, is kind of a, a way to ignite the network. Because uh, if, you, um, if you want to have presence on smartphones, sometimes it can either cost you a lot of money in marketing to, uh, to basically bring awareness about your app. Or if you work with app developers, they can charge you actually to have uh, your, your library uh, running on, on, on the app. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it can be very costly. I think today we have 20 million participating smartphones. It's five to six million daily active uh, nodes in the, in the network, so smartphones. And we discover or connect to 30 million IoT devices a day. Sometimes we spike to 80 million devices. Wow. And, uh, and all that we were able to make it happen thanks to this new economic model. Yeah. So there is a, first a necessity to build this kind of network with this, this new ecosystem and a and, and new economic model. Uh, there is the fact that uh, we believe it could be the beginning of uh, UBI, so universal basic income. Ah, I love this. And uh, that's something that, that I mean, I, I appreciate and uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's great for the future. Um, but there is more to that. Also, when you, it comes to the business logic, uh, ultimately, so we started to build a network. Today we have, I mean, most of the control of the network, but our goal is really to decentralize that network. Uh, and make it completely independent, like the internet uh, basically is independent. So for that, uh, you need uh, technologies like blockchain. Uh, you need to uh, be able to uh, have other people participate in the infrastructure. So for example, right now, we are starting to onboard the first partners to deploy validator nodes in the network. To, uh, and to deploy, I'm sorry, what was the nodes in the network? Va validator nodes. Oh, okay, validator so, nodes. So Got participants it. will be able to set up their own validator node, nodal validator node, and receive revenues uh, based on the volume of transactions uh, that are happening on the network. And they will also receive a share of the mining. Uh, and uh, so we are starting that, and, we, and the goal is really to decentralize this whole infrastructure. So did you um, think up this 
economic model yourself or did you sort of end up in a think tank with others and kind of, it, the pieces all fell together and you just put them together? Um, it's, uh, I mean, initially it was more like an intuition. Uh, and, uh, and then after, yes, it was a brainstorm with my team, uh, my co-founder uh, and the early advisors of the company. And, and we, we looked at, okay, how, okay, that's the way to do it. But how should it, what, what it should look like? How yeah. will it work? Right. And I would say this is also, uh, even if now we have a very precise idea and it's working, it's no more like just a, a, a vision. We really executed and it's, it's working. We have paying uh, also customers who use the network. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, it's still evolving. Like the model, the, the base of the model is there. It's working, but we know that it will need improvement to become more and more optimal. So uh, it's not something that's uh, set in stone. Makes sense. I have actually worked on an economic model myself. I, I made up one uh, and it's called Proof of Scale. Uh, and I've, I've done a couple of episodes that have discussed it in the past, but I will send you an article. I would love to discuss with you how you're evolving your economic model because mine also is devised to drive the price of things down by capping the profit margins for within a certain like tiered system. A, simple, a similar way that people will lock up part of their coin. This is a way to uh, potentially with any company that it applies to can drive the prices down to nearly zero, making this model the most effective one at scale only. So once, once you have scale and users, you could really put it to work. I, I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with your economic model. And I'll, I'll throw in some information for you after this is over. Well, Did you happen you. to study? I said, thank you. I'm, an, and I am a, I'm excited to read about it. I would love yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love people. Not very many people in the world right now are geeking out on economic models. <laughs> it's like, hi, I, I love you. I read The Economist and I make up economic models. It's not like something you want to bring up, you know, on a first date or with anybody who's just met you, not even over Thanksgiving dinner. My relatives have no patience for this, but it's nice to meet another, you know, another nerd. Well, like the, you, beauty, so. the beauty is when you, you manage to create such thing is a... Uh, uh, yeah, you can really change a, a whole industry uh, and the dynamic. Yeah. And in our case, we believe it can be a way to actually provide uh, almost free connectivity for people. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and that's a, a vision, I mean, my co-founder and I had for a long time uh, and have been working and, at many, and had many attempts at it. But we believe now we apply it to IoT devices using the Bluetooth Flow Energy Wireless Interface. Uh, we are actively working to apply it to 5G millimeter wave base stations, uh, where uh, potentially instead of having the telcos investing in infrastructure, it would be people and enterprise uh, investing in the, in the base station, uh, but in, to, to, in, in return, they would basically use um, this protocol on their base station and generate revenue. And that way you can imagine that at some point potentially uh, access for people could be be free and only a business application would be or IoT device would be paying for accessing the, the connectivity. So yeah, that's, that's fantastic. A very interesting model, yeah. yeah, it's about time we unburden the actual user because you know when you look at every economic model up until very recently, it's it, the engine that makes all of this that, that creates all of this value is you know the, the people at the bottom just doing 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 constantly. And just capturing very little of that return and it's just nice to now see entry points being created and you're clearly making a, a huge you know dent in that did you end up um did you study economics to get into this or how did you actually kind of foray into this very very pardon the term nerdy approach to uh <laughs> to economic models so i i was a nerd uh, i mean i was coding when i was a kid <laughs> i started coding when i was eight I was not, uh, I would say, good enough in mathematics to uh, to actually push too much into an engineering career. Uh, so I, I chose uh, actually uh, economics. Uh, surprise, uh, surprise. <laughs> but 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 I, I, I but I I, uh, I I think I learned just by doing, you know. Yeah. Most of the things uh, I just learned it by by doing things. So. I think most entrepreneurs, that is the case. We learn by doing, and you know, if, as long as we're active in it, we usually kind of pick it up along the way. Otherwise, I mean, what's the, what's the point of book smarts if, you know, it's just, it's just theoretical, right? Did right. you end up getting a, an advanced degree or did you just get your bachelor's and then head off into the world of business or? So I got an MBA uh, and then I started building companies pretty early. Yes. 
So coding at eight, MBA, 12, then just building companies? Is that, was that the process? I wish it was that, no. <laughs> but it was a long, painful process, but with a lot of learning, with many mistakes, many failures, yeah. How way. many companies now have you founded? Uh, I Ballpark. Found, <laughs> uh, I mean, I would say, uh, I'm not, not going to count the one that didn't last it long or. No, you should count the failures too. Come on. It's only, it's only honest. Well, I, I, I founded more than 10 companies. Oh my gosh. So this is like your, your 11th plus company. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it had better, it, it had better stick. <laughs> so if, uh, if for a user out there, for somebody, a user, a listener, someone who is you know, interested in what Nodal is doing, um, and they wanted to get involved, I've, I've downloaded the cash app myself. It didn't tell me a whole lot about the, the company, but how could somebody, aside from downloading the cash, the Nodal cash, um, application, how would somebody learn more and sort of, um, kind of do their, their homework on what Nodal is? Um, so they, they can go to the website, uh, nodal.io, nice. they can read the white paper. I think that explains really well the, the vision and what we are building. Uh, they can download the Nodal Cash app to start participating and earning uh, Nodal Cash. Uh, and, um, and soon they will be, if they are a developer, they will be able to actually de also develop their own application on the network and enable enterprise, uh, other developers to use this application and they will be part of the ecosystem and basically be also generating revenues for that. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Um, so the next person to, uh, to hear this, if they're, the next thing they can do is really download the app and check that out, learn about this. What are you having, uh, what is coming up on the forefront for you guys? What's coming up in the next two, four, eight weeks? I know I've heard a lot of buzz around, you know, major, major developments, but what are you guys doing right now? So we, uh, we are focusing on building the community worldwide. So uh, really building a, a lot of uh, groups of people who actually uh, uh, love what we are doing and who want to participate. Uh, either in, uh, uh, also we were starting a private sale for, for the token. Uh, and, and, and we really want to, this in, in the coming months, grow the community of users like uh, by a lot. It's, uh, uh, so that is really our focus. It's grow the network with people who have the app, use the network, uh, participate in the network. So it's really about growing the network. Our focus is really uh, solely on that, I would say, right now. And so when people earn this cash, are they, are, do you have plans to be listed on an exchange or is there a value to it? I'm not sure. What, it, what, is, a, what is one nodal cash equal in the, in the world of other? How does it translate? So we asked people, um, the early adopters, uh, so we had a group of early adopters because we were pre-installed on the blo first blockchain phone from HTC, the Exodus. And we did a survey and we asked people uh, what value they would assign to a nodal cash, just yeah. to get an idea. And uh, some people were saying, oh, one to $5. Some people were saying, oh no, it should be uh, 10 to $15. Right. So it's uh, and it was very interesting uh, to understand also, and you have to, to to get a sense because you want to bring uh, utility, but you all want to so also want to maintain this community of active people. But it also, I mean, it begs the the the, um, the statement that Steve Jobs made a long time ago, which was like, you know, I don't go to focus groups. I know what they need. They don't know what they need. <laughs> and so like, I'm not going to ask them what they need. I'm just going to give it to them because I know them. And it was very like a dictatorial process, but. You know, in the end, did you take their feedback and that, that made you, did you go with the prices that they said or did it just make you realize there was a high perceived value and that was positive in and of itself? Well, it, we did that to understand the, the perception and we, by getting these numbers, we realized that actually they were really much valuing their participation and, uh, and that they would put a price on that also, which was interesting to know. And it also showed the quality of the app. So even if it's still very early, also, we, we realized, well, we've built something that actually is generating a uh, real value. Yeah. And not only for manufacturers or uh, smart cities or enterprise who want to benefit from accessing that, net that network, but also for the participants who are uh, basically the people like you and me that install an app on their phone and uh, enjoying this network. So it's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, was, it, it was a great way to, uh, to understand better what was happening. 
and uh, I would say- so What did the price fall on? Did you discover, did, have you fallen on what the price is yet or is it too early to know? Well, we, um, we, we, we have an idea, uh, but you know, it's, uh, I mean, after, uh, has, I think people will decide in the ecosystem and we will see what happens when, when the ecosystem is more open and they can uh, basically exchange that token. Yeah, so you're looking to exchange it. So you, it's just too far down the line to know what you would list it at if you were to list it on an exchange just yet? Well, that, that I think there's a lot of uh, elements that needs to happen to, to, to confirm that with certainty. Even if we know it's going to happen, what we want first is to show that people with that token will have uh, access to services that they can purchase. And I think uh, we are preparing also this year to actually enable people to spend their nodal cash. Yeah. And... Uh, and focusing on the type of service that they would be able to access uh, through their phone and their app. So not only uh, monetizing this ecosystem network with enterprise who want to use it and leverage the network, but also uh, monetizing the ecosystem for uh, people who are already participating. So uh, give them the, the possibility to spend that, uh, that nodal cash for services for themselves. That makes sense. That sounds wonderful. It's going to be really cool to see this happen. Um, I'm looking forward to, to not only earning more nodal cash, but, uh, but you know, spending it and, and finding out what I can get for it. I mean, Sweatcoin, I think I've been using that thing for so long, I don't, I don't even know what I could go buy. I, I forgot about it. I just turned it on a long time ago and forgot about it. But, you know, maybe I'll have to walk around with the, no, no, I mean, how want... many apps can I run and start just generating money as I walk around? No, it's going to be we, great. We really want to show that uh, it gives you access to uh, really tangible things and that, and we want people to be, uh, to be on it. We want people to participate more, see how they can spend their little cash. Uh, and uh, no, no, so we, and, and this is going to happen this year, yes. So what does your public sale look like? Do you have a, a time for when that's going to begin? It's a lot of uh, regulatory uh, things to, uh, to go oh, through. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that will enable us to, um, to confirm that it's going to be a public sale. Uh, and uh, when we do it, uh, most probably that will indicate basically also that, that after that, basically, uh, the token should be also uh, exchanged more freely, yeah. That's great. I know those regulatory hurdles. After being deep in blockchain, I went and got my securities licenses. And uh, so I know, I, I, you know, now I, I do regulation Ds and, reg, you know, different regulated sales. So uh, I know I know what you're in for. It's it's not yeah, the easiest So we got step by step. So far, it's going extremely well. Uh, Very good. And uh, But the goal is really to have a, a currency, which is a kind of a, can call it compared to a telecom credit because we are talking about networks and communications. Yeah. And uh, we want this to enable people to buy any kind of service related to communications. And so that's- Ah, uh, excellent yeah. sector to be focused in. That's great. I'm so glad. Well, I hope that it expands beyond that. There's always room for, hopefully you can be, you can become the, uh, the nodal enabled Amazon rival that can, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> take I mean, out we, we, we are we, we are convinced that the nodal network is going to power many of very, very large enterprise services, actually. Fantastic. I cannot we, wait to see we are, that. And we are working on that. Uh, uh, I mean, the two main services, just to talk about the enterprise part, and yeah. I can finish on that, is uh, we have uh, what we call a smart asset API that enables any enterprise to locate things, which can be packages, shipping pallets, uh, or collect data from sensors. And we are already working with large organizations. And the second one is a service we built last year to fight uh, the pandemic. And we oh. created in partnership with Avnet, a small device that helps uh, employees social distance and record their interactions at work. So uh, if someone gets uh, infected with COVID, basically uh, you can avoid to have a, a, an outbreak and uh, test the right people. And uh, we are going to announce the first customer who is a pretty large, uh, I mean, international organization and that's going to be uh, shipped, I think, in the month of April this year. Uh, so we have these two main services with actually a pipeline of almost like $250 million uh, revenues for the network. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, you so guys are growing uh, really quickly. Yeah, yeah. so we are doing uh, blockchain, building the largest wireless network out there, but we are also like providing real services with real revenue for the ecosystem. Fantastic. This, that's, a, that's not a small undertaking whatsoever. So uh, I'm amazing. And, and the beauty of the ecosystem and, the, and this, I would say, this flying wheel that's, uh, that's going on is that we want people who participate not only to generate uh, revenues by creating the coin, but they will also be able to receive a share 
of the services, uh, the revenues from the services uh, on top of the network. So that's where, uh, even if there is a fine amount of tokens, uh, and we think it's going to take 10 years before to mine all these tokens, uh, the people will keep on receiving revenues because they are part of the infrastructure that enable these services to work. And they will keep on receiving a share of any service that a developer or an enterprise is building on the network. Oh, that's fantastic. That's how we, we create this sustainable, basically, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that, that way it can go on forever. That's fantastic. You're truly yeah. building one of the most necessary things. And I hope that that as more projects that are using DLT come up, they end up being on the, the nodal network just so they can add and be additive to this ecosystem rather than trying to be competitive. It just doesn't make sense. You guys really have a lot of open doors for people to participate on all levels, enterprise all the way to user. It's fantastic. Yeah, and we um, and to come back to your original point, we actually believe uh, that IoT and uh, the number of things that are going to be connected is not in tens of, of billions, but more uh, in hundreds of billions and trillions of things. So what we are building is really a, a network to enable to take data in and out of hundreds of billions of things and leverage uh, what we call this ocean of awareness to face some of the biggest civilization's challenges. And we believe that's why connectivity is so necessary. Absolutely. But the important thing is we do that by also looking at how we protect privacy because it's a very important thing and point when it comes to uh, connectivity uh, and especially when you start to locate things. So we really are focused on how we protect actually the privacy of everyone and how we secure this, also these communications. So one of, the, one of the big companies we work with is also working on leveraging our public key infrastructure to secure communications from these objects or tiny sensors and be able also to authenticate them using our infrastructure. So actually uh, privacy and security in addition to bringing connectivity are really uh, the things we are, we want to focus also as a team. That's fantastic. There's uh, there's so many components to the nodal ecosystem. I can't wait until you guys have more of this up on your website as well, because I think diving into the white paper is again for nerds. Absolutely, but yeah, I hope uh, more non-nerds get to know what you we, guys are we doing. We are working on that, so hopefully we'll do a better job at explaining what we do on the website. Yeah. Oh, so. oh no, your website's fantastic. I just I mean there are so many new things that you're also working on that that I would never have known unless I'd you heard it here first, basically. <laughs> I'm glad about. Um, so I look forward to, to just seeing how you guys develop and especially after you guys are going to announce your public sale or if you get further down this this path if you ever want to come back I would love to do a, a follow-up interview with you see how things have developed especially with such a you know a multifaceted ecosystem as nodal and uh, I just appreciate you taking the time to come on thank you so much. Well, thank you Monica no, it's, 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 it's great to explain and to get more people aware of what we do and build and we would love to be back for uh, when we announce a, a public sale, definitely. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, um, do you have any parting words that you want to give the average user? Or you, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we take off here? I, I can share a bit of my entre um, experience as an entrepreneur. Please do. Uh, I think like last year was challenging for everyone. Uh, <laughs> and you're also the master of the understatement. And, and, and I think it was even more challenging for early stage entrepreneur. And I just want to tell everyone, like, uh, I really, I had pushed the envelope many times in my life as an entrepreneur, never as much as last year. And I think we could have died so many times. Yeah. And I just want to, uh, uh, to share that message because I know there are many entrepreneurs out there, many young people who want to build things. And uh, I have two, two main recommendations I like to share just about my experience. And uh, I, mean, I, felt, I mean, I've done mistakes more than once and repeated them. Uh, hopefully I've learned some, uh, from them, and, but often I realized I needed to repeat them several times to learn from them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so the first is never give up. And, 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 and I'm not saying it enough. I mean, I just say it once. I'm going to repeat it. Never give up. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really so, so important, especially when you believe in you and you believe in your vision and what you are building and and, and, and you want to, to realize your dream. Never, never, never give up. And second is uh, life is so much full of surprise and uh, bad, but also very good surprise often. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's very important. And I, I came up with that sentence uh, many years ago is uh, victory is in the unknown. Ooh, victory is in the unknown. I like that. And for that, you, know, you need to be able to face your fears. <laughs> Absolutely.
<laughs> yeah, the fact that you've made it through 2020 with an early stage startup, <laughs> you pretty much, I think, slayed, I would, I hope, knock on wood, you slayed the greatest dragon along the way. <laughs> Hopefully from here on, you at least can return to the, well, how does it feel? You, you go out, you slay the dragon, you return to the village and heal the village. Hopefully you're on the returning to the village end of this, of this story here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I, uh, victory is in the unknown is definitely a, an excellent quote to be using in this. Thank you. Hopefully we'll make it into the title or something. And, um, and I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Misha Benayel, did I get it right? You did, you did right. Thank almost, you. almost. I wish I spoke French, but I also realized I would be hopeless at it. But thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time and I wish you all the best with your private sale and your amazing ecosystem that you're building. Thank you, Monica. All right, this is Monica Profit signing off on the new trust economy and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You've been listening to the new trust economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.